So the next thing we're gonna look at is kind of some unique garden containers that are you're not gonna find down at your garden center. So what do we have here, Sam? What'd you guys find? This one was a, uh, a root that had, a tree that had been harvested years ago and the root had pulled out of the ground. Um, it lent itself to, to a nice big cavity that we could uh, add some soil to and uh, just put a few flowers in and, and uh, get a, a different usage out of something that's just gonna be rotting away in the forest. Absolutely. I mean, it'll probably rot away, but it, we've enjoyed it for the number of years that we've had it. Perfect. We're going to look at a few other things. You can see the, the creative beauty as we're moving to the next um, site here. Uh, this one is a unique piece. It's a old meat wagon out of a meat packing uh, facility. Uh, once again, put some drain holes in the bottom of it. Uh, we just we painted it up to make it look different. Uh, throw some soil in and now you've suddenly got a flower garden. And we've got uh, oh, poppies and some uh, Sinkafo, I think, in here, and some. Uh, there was some columbine in here, um, and then we we've decorated with uh, native rock uh, around a lot of our gardens, uh, especially the uh, the moss rock. We've always loved that, and uh, just right up to work it into the mix. Yeah, I'm gonna show you that real quick. So as you can see it down around the base of that tub there, perfect. And what about this garden here? So this one really is about a large grouping of moss rock and what you mentioned earlier Sam is is you kind of look at your landscape and see what's available for you to actually create with and in this case most people see a pile of rocks and go well that just looks like you know a pile of rocks and kind of trash with stuff but you guys have have gone you know what let's create art out of this and you, beauty you take that pile of rocks and you fill it in with a little bit of uh, topsoil or uh, maybe some compost uh, just a blend uh, and then in this particular garden, we planted a lot of ground covers. Uh, there's a few succulents in this one, and it just fills in real nicely as it as the uh, ground covers grow, and uh, really accents the uh, the uh, moss rock stone. And so you've got a nice combination garden. Uh, didn't really take much other than a little bit extra muscle to piece it together, but once again, you've you've done something with it that you thought was just a waste pile. Uh, we had a waste pile over here with just a pile of rocks. Um, we put uh, some soil in this one once again, and it's a gorgeous columbine garden in the spring. So it's, it's just a matter of using something that was left over from the uh, construction of the property and uh, add a few uh, stumps, little stumps to accent it, put in some colored moss rock, boom, you've got yourself a, 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 another garden. That's perfect. So you can see this, here. This particular one was a huge waste pile when the uh, when the house was built. Um, we've added uh, colorful rocks and moss rocks to go with the the waste rock. Once again, put in some uh, some soil, and then start getting creative with what plants you want to put in. We added some aspen, gives us some nice color in the fall and some you know, nice nice spring color when the aspen are first coming out, and then just adding. Um, we try to make this one pretty much a perennial garden. Uh, we've got some very good gas in, grass in there. Uh, Penstemon have come in. We have columbines. We have uh, wild geraniums. We've got uh, Maltese crosses. We've got some flax in here. So everything just kind of, this is almost like a, a native what you'd find out in the forest when you're walking through. Uh, we try to incorporate uh, in our backyard. That's great, Sam. And then I'm just going to show you this. This is some of their amazing artwork that they've done. You see those, what they've taken, just sticks they found as a, you know, unique sticks and kind of tied them all together in a framework of an art piece as a backdrop. And that's, I would say, they are all over the property here that you guys have done this creative um, design with. The, I love it. I mean, it's just really creative and beautiful. Again, taking sticks where people go, well, that's just like trashy. And they, like, they tied it down into the into the, the log that's down at the bottom there and they're anchored in that way so it's standing as a kind of, I won't say freestanding, but essentially uh, because the log is there that they've tied it right into that and that create one, this. That one's freestanding. <laughs> so it's about, uh, I'm going to say, eight to ten feet tall probably with that. So very, very creative in that. And that's that's one of Barbara's uh, gifts to the property is to, she's real big on uh, interesting shaped uh, sticks and so when she's out hiking or we're out, we're out hiking, uh, you'd be surprised what comes home in the truck with uh, rocks and sticks. Uh, if we go out to the, uh, people say, where do you get this? Well, you can go to any of the reservoirs and it washes up in the uh, inlets. And uh, they're happy to let you haul some of that trash off so that uh, 
uh, you don't have to worry about doing it. And you can just turn it into a, a, an art piece. Most of the nice things about the, the reservoir logs is they're already stripped. You don't have to peel them. You don't have to do anything. Put a little stain on them. Uh, put a little sealant on them, uh, whether outdoors. And we have to go back through and periodically touch them up because the, the weather is brutal at 9,000 feet. That it is. Well, this is just amazing creativity with that. So what do we have next on our, here's another one of those, another one of the creations here as we move kind of uphill here toward the house. We'll come around to the next gardens here. Small spot that uh, we thought could, uh, we'd enjoy some color off the uh, off the side of the house as so we build up a little uh, circular pattern of uh, rocks. We've got color vine and flax and uh, penstemon and a, a few other things uh, that grow in this one just real well. Again, this one's a fairly shaded one. They're right underneath a, a ponderosa pine. Very nicely done with that. We've got a couple more to go here, I think. This particular garden was uh, uh, made out of uh, thin, thin rocks. Uh, if you look at this, this is really only, you know, maybe an inch thick. So a lot of this is uh, inch to two inch thick. Um, it was kind of like uh, building a jigsaw puzzle. I just had the pieces laid out and I started building. And uh, these were just put together with mortar. And once again, we created a, a, a garden space. And uh, this one has been overtaken by the columbine. Uh, we've got a little bit of Queen Anne's lace in here. And, uh, but we enjoy the columbines. We tried for years to grow them. And now we've got them. And so uh, everybody's jealous. <laughs> so again, you know, the, this bed is probably about uh, almost three feet high with the stone laid on edge with that. So it makes it really nice if you're thinking you, if, if they would wanted to make it a, a vegetable garden in a, a little bit sunnier area. Um, they would have been able to reach in there fairly easily instead of having to bend down to, to um, get into the beds there. So really nice way. Again, this is a creative way of, of what a raised bed can look like or what you can be doing with raised beds. It doesn't have to be just, you know, two by 12 or two by 10 timbers uh, laid on edge and, and nailed together at the ends, um, which we typically see. So here's another example we mentioned earlier. The, oh, here's the, a, the, the half whiskey barrel, which you see in the garden center every, every year. Yep. It works out just real fine as a container. Uh, this one's a little more uh, permanent because it, once you fill it with dirt, it gets pretty heavy. So yeah, you're not going to be moving that for sure. <laughs> Here's some of the rocks that we saw in the uh, cactus garden. This is just a dry stack wall. And once again, it's just kind of like putting a, uh, a jigsaw puzzle together. You, 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 we laid everything out and said, okay, here's this thickness, here's this thickness. And so you start, you're building your rows based on the thickness that you've got. Uh, trying to follow the, the flow of the terrain without getting uh, too too uh, vertical. So when you've mentioned dry stack numerous times. So what does dry stack mean for those who don't know what that term means? We're just piling up the rocks without putting any mortar in there. There's no cement. There's just uh, that's all they are. There's, you, you lift them right off and, and set them down on the ground, and you wouldn't notice any difference. Uh, it, it's a little labor intensive if you want to relocate your garden, but uh, it gives you a nice look and. Uh, You'll notice that we've had a few columbine volunteer to come right out the side. Yeah, because you got the space so it's not mortised together so they can have a place to grow potentially. So again, you don't want to put, you don't want to build these super tall because you don't want to have it create a hazard where it falls in on you or on, something like that. But this is about, probably about a two foot wall it looks like. This one bows a little bit from uh, pushing snow against it. <laughs> <laughs> but it, uh, it's, it's repairable. <laughs> Correct. So, again, another opportunity to look at how you can be creative with your raised beds. And here's another kind of example. It's a, a lower, it's a still a raised bed, but, you know, maybe a foot tall with the, using the moss rock there and creating a, a border there to kind of contain the soil and then growing some plants and so forth in there. This one's a fairly new garden, so it's not real developed yet. Uh, we just had a space here that we were trying to keep the deer from trafficking through. So we just said, well, we'll just fence this off. And we had a little uh, pine growing in the back. And uh, we said, well, we'll just put some rocks in here and add, add some flowers and away we go. Just right. keeps adding to, the, adding to the mix. That's perfect. Okay, we're at our next kind of location here of a, of a garden technique. Um, what is this, Sam? This is a, a cold frame. Um, we can uh, get some early start on some uh, some plants if, if we're uh, successful. This uh, this comes down and it's on a slant, 
so it's aimed toward the south and so we pick up the uh, the early uh, winter winter sun and uh, you can get some stuff going uh, early in the season we haven't had a real lot of success with it um, we had a real heavy glass window on there um, but it, it's ongoing we've decided that you know okay it's a it's another flower garden now it's another variation of a, of a theme yep so this, one, this is a more traditional with the two by uh two by eights two by tens on here um uh, but it gives you another another option to uh uh, to do some stuff. So cold frames, as Sam was mentioning, they're kind of really set up this way. You've got the hinged on the back. Usually, like you said, it's you can use windows, old windows, single pane windows you get from the restore place or anything like that. Um, uh, put them on hinges there and, and lower it down. You can really get that soil cooking fairly early in the season with stuff and get things growing. Again, you have to be careful to be to vent that heat out. So he now has a screen on there. I'm not sure if you kind of trade that out as things get warmer to probably to help the hail or prevent the hail from it's coming down the, on. It's more of a hail screen right now, but the, the plants have gotten so tall that right uh, it, it loses its practicality uh, once you get into mid-season <laughs> so again it depends what you're growing in in your cold frames uh you've got mostly your these are mostly flowers here perennials and annuals with that so yeah, but if a couple seconds over in this yep. corner that uh that we got going in fact we've got one in bloom yeah you can make this entire thing a succulent garden for the most part they um they are a little bit shorter than some of these other flowers that you've got in here and you may be able to to lower that uh, hail screen, aka screen, yeah. uh, down onto there to prevent the hail from from wiping stuff out. So great. What else do we have? Uh, Can I continue another, around? Uh, ground cover and succulent garden. Uh, I guess mostly succulents in this one. This is one of our newest ones, and we actually transplanted this garden from underneath a large spruce that we had, uh, where it wasn't faring real well. Um, we had a, a stack of uh, red rocks that, uh, once again, we just kind of you know dry stacked them and put a Put a shape together and uh, hopefully it stays pretty much in place and then uh, we've got some nice color going and we've got a couple of the plants blooming right at the moment so so i see what you did also back here is you created a little a little uh, box here off the ground so deer probably can't get to it that you could grow some stuff in there as well if you wanted to which is a creative way if you've got like a side of a house or if you've got a barn or a shed or something that uh, faces uh, maybe a little more southerly direction there but you can put these kind of uh um, garden boxes up there out of the range of the animals or most of the animals anyway and and maybe give that a shot again this is all about experimenting and uh, one of the things that sam has mentioned as we've walked around his property is that this is not something that obviously happens overnight this is decades worth of experimenting and trying things and moving things and adjusting and that you know to be a gardener up here in the in the mountains you've got to be a little bit tenacious and a little bit creative and be willing to try things out and risk losing your plants uh, just to give another shot to next year, creating a different microclimate or putting things in a different location. So, yeah, great ideas here, Sam. The, the simple thing about that box is the, the pointed sticks are just garden stakes that you buy down at the hardware store. And uh, just a stained piece of uh, one by, uh, built, to get, built a little box, put a little soil in there, boom, you got a garden. Perfect. All right, we're now up on the side of a hill here. What do we have going on here, Sam? Okay, this was a natural rock outcropping. The the entire uh, hillside here is pretty much uh, rock and uh, native grasses. Uh, my wife decided that uh, with a little bit of uh, uh, leveling and a little bit of soil and build a little bit of terracing with the uh, with the various layers of uh, moss rock in there, that we could create some uh, some garden spaces. This one, once again, uh, ground covers. Um, the pensamen have moved in. Um, which is, we just try to thin those just so they don't overtake the garden. Uh, but it gives us a nice little use of uh, what nature gave us to begin with. It just said, here's this big old rock wall, what are you going to do with it? And by terracing it just a little bit with the, uh, with the colored stones, uh, put in a little pea gravel for uh, decoration and uh, boom. So this is a west-facing slope here. So see all those rocks we call, and I think you mentioned this, Sam, that creates what's called a heat sink. So all day long, or at least through the, through the this time on for the rest of the day here, you're going to be hitting, um, well, for, for a period of time anyway, you're going to end up getting um, the sun hitting on those rocks and creating warmth that will radiate throughout the night. So you can... You can create uh, or put plants in there that may not do as well in other areas, but because you've got this rock heat sink here, 
that the heat will radiate all through the night. You can probably extend your season here. The plants probably last a bit longer here, I would think, on the, on this rocky slope. As, as long as we can keep the deer from uh, <laughs> munching, munching them down. Um, all the sticks that you see across the top, we put in as a combination hail uh, deflector. And also we can drape a, a, a shade cloth over the top of it uh, if need be. Now this garden seems to be doing real well without a shade cloth on it. Uh, so we just uh, kind of say, well, we just took advantage of a, of a hillside that uh, didn't have a whole lot of uh, developmental process to it. <laughs> yeah, that's great. That's great. So again, be creative out here, folks. All right, so what do we have here, Sam? Well, this is uh, my wife's total creation of using uh, landscape materials that we may have had laying around and incorporating some art. Uh, we've got some succulents in here. Uh, we've actually had some aspen that have... Uh, uh, transferred across and so we're getting a nice little uh, aspen grove slowly slowly developing across the front she made kind of like a riverbed stream and you know just using different river rock and and stuff that you can get by the bucket when you're out uh, cruising up and down the roads uh, once again uh, trying to keep the rodents out uh, is impossible but you you plant more than they can eat and you might have a chance <laughs> It's a good rule of thumb. Plant more than they can eat. Plant more than they can eat. I hope they don't invite your friends. And then uh, we, you can see we incorporated a lot of the rocks and then we've got just once again build it up a little bit, fill in some dirt, and you've got a multi-level garden. Yeah, that's without, great. Without a, a whole lot of uh, uh, brain damage. Perfect.